Hello guys, so now we are going to discuss uh, another topic in the human digestive system that is uh, your uh, oral cavity. Oral cavity. Indeed, today we will be discussing about the teeth and the tongue. So, this uh, teeth and the tongue are uh, generally uh, uh, counts under the accessory organs. Accessory organs. Okay. So, what do you mean by accessory organ? Means it doesn't take part in the digestion process directly, but it will help in the digestion process. Okay. It will help in the digestive process. So, it is known as accessory organs. So, without making any due, let's move on to the slide number one. So, this is your oral cavity, and this is these are the main parts of the oral cavity. So, this is the simplistic diagram of the oral cavity. Uh, there are much more complicated diagram. If you see, if you go through the books, you can find there are so many complicated diagrams. Okay, not complicated. There are vast. So much uh, information will be there. So I have uh, I found this diagram in the uh, uh, Google and I found this very interesting because very less amount of informations are available here. So uh, these are the main parts of the oral cavity. So in includes teeth, okay, gums, soft palate, hard palate, oropharynx, uvula, tongue, and lips. Okay. So today we are going to discuss on tongue and the teeth. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. So friends, now let's see the structure of the teeth. So the structure of the teeth here is basically divided into two sections: the crown section, okay, and the root section. The crown section is composed of enamel and dentine. Okay, dentine or dentine. So this enamel is the yellowish what white part of the teeth, okay, which you can see in your mirror. But this root part you cannot see in the mirror. It will be buried inside the gums, okay. This whitish, this uh, color of the enamel will be generally whitish yellow, yellow or white, okay, yellowish white. So uh, this color depends on the thickness of the enamel, okay, the thickness of the enamel plus the age, age of the person. And the hygiene, okay, high hygiene of the person. If the person is not having, not doing, not uh, regularly doing the brushing of their teeth, then it may look yellowish in color. Okay. So next to the layer of enamel is the dentine layer. Okay. And then next to the dentine, there will be a pulp cavity, layer of pulp cavity. So inside this pulp cavity, only all the blood vessels and the nerve endings will be there. Okay. If you go little further inside the pulp cavity, you can see here this is the root canal. This is the root canal. Okay. And these are the openings of the root root opening. Through which through this opening only all the blood vessels and nerve endings will enter inside the pulp cavity. Okay. So if suppose there is a problem in the root canal, so in the if you go to dentist, they will do the root canal treatment. Okay. So this is all about your structure of the teeth. Now let's come let, let's come and see what is the function of the teeth. Actually, there are three major function of the main function of the teeth. First is chewing food into a bolus that can easily swallowed for further digestion. Next is Next is giving structure, tissue support and shape to the face. Third one is aiding in the pronunciation of sound during speech. So during speech also this will help eh? it will, and it will give the shape to the face also. So if you can see there are around uh, 32 teeth okay, in an adult human. Okay, Let's count. So the incisors, the incisors which are front side. okay. There will be four incisors in the downside and four incisors in the after. So there will be eight incisors. Okay. There will be eight incisors. 
so incisors will help in cutting and biting next comes to canine okay next layer so there will be two canine in the downside and two canine in the upside so it will be around four canine okay and it will help in tearing and gripping next is premolar so there are four premolars okay there are four premolars on the downside four premolars on the upside so there will be eight premolars okay now comes to next to the molars so there will be six molars in the downside and six molars in the upside so it will be 12 okay so if you count all together it will come around 32 okay it will come 32 teeth so an adult human has 32 teeth so uh, now let's come to the tongue the structure of the tongue is generally divided into three categories so first is this this part is okay so this uh, first part the, this is known as this area is known as your tip okay this area is known as tip or apex okay and this area is known as your body this area is known as your body this area is known as your body okay and the inside area is known as your base inside area is known as your base so tip body and base okay so tip of the tongue is the most anterior part of the tongue okay and it's followed by the body this is followed by the body and all the taste buds will be there in the body okay body area of the tongue and the base of the tongue has the most the posterior part of the tongue okay organ most posterior part of the organ is your base and it is populated by numerous lymphoid organs okay numerous lymphoid aggregators known as lingual tonsils okay these are all you can see dot 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 these are lingual tonsils so the base is composed of so many lingual tonsils so many lingual tonsils will be there in the base of the tongue so this is the uh, general structure of the tongue now let's see the tongue is made up of basically three elements and in the picture you can see there are different regions for taste in the tongue okay so you can see bitter taste sour salty sweet okay so these are all different type of taste in different region of the tongue and this tongue is made of a generated three elements that is epithelium muscle and glands okay so epithelium uh, comprises of papillae and test buds this test bulb help in the sense of test okay this test but what it will do help in the sense of test and this uh, epithelium which is uh, this epithelium is composed of squamous tissue okay squamous tissue so what type of epithelium is present in the tongue means you can tell squamous epithelial tissue okay and this tongue is attached to the base using lingual frenulum okay using lingual frenulum you can see this lingual frenulum so this tongue is attached to this base using lingual frenulum and because of this lingual frenulum this movement backward movement of tongue is not possible tongue can move front side okay tongue can move front side but backward movement of tongue tongue is restricted because of this lingual frenulum okay next come to muscle so this tongue is made up of voluntary muscle so it can move you can you know that tongue can move wherever you want you can move the tongue direction okay next come to glands so tongue has uh, basically three glands mucus gland serous gland and lymph node okay mucus gland produce mucus and serous gland produce some enzymes serous enzymes and lymph node produce lymph okay which helps in fighting microorganisms now the function of tongue includes mastication means chewing okay deglutition means uh, engulfing okay taste speech and secretion of some enzymes so this is the functions of tongue now uh, let's see the physiology of digestion in the mouth okay physiology of digestion in the mouth so, so whenever you chew any food or masticate it will it will be masticated using teeth okay 
it will be masticated in teeth and tongue so tongue has two type of muscles extrinsic muscle and intrinsic muscle so extrinsic muscle what it will do it will help in the elevation of tongue depression of tongue protrusion of tongue retraction of the tongue okay the intrinsic muscle this is the intrinsic muscle what intrinsic muscle will do shortening and widen of your tongue shortening and widen of your tongue so this is the uh, function of your extrinsic and intrinsic muscle once the food is uh, properly mixed with the uh, content of the mouth it will form a bolus okay so bolus is nothing but your food particle food particle and your uh, content salivary secretion salivary secretion okay salivary secretion plus mucus so this all will be there in your bolus so this bolus is very the formation of bolus is very important because it bolus is not formed it is very it will be very hard to engulf any food okay so bolus help in the smooth engulfment of the food through use of phagus okay so now let's come to the glands so glands generally release serous like enzymes and mucus means uh, mucin or wet wet substances okay which help in the hydrolysis of your food particle okay and this serous uh, and then uh, the saliva also will be mixed in this bolus okay the saliva will be produced from salivary glands like parotid submandibular and sublingual gland and one important uh, gland is there von abner's gland which secretes lingual lipids which will help in the digestion of your uh, lipid particles in the mouth itself okay so it will be produced in the mouth one inverse gland okay so uh, this is uh, uh, how the food is digested in the mouth another thing you should know that this parotid gland submandibular and sublingual gland will produce an enzyme called alpha amylase which will help in the breakdown of starch into small carbohydrate okay starch into small carbohydrate in the oral cavity in the oral cavity and this will pass on to the esophagus this will pass on to the esophagus so in this way there will be digestion in the mouth so today we have discussed about three things first is your uh, teeth first is your teeth then tongue and then we have discussed about the physiology of digestion in mouth physiology of digestion in mouth so that's all for today thank you very much i hope you have enjoyed the video